Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to do a circular motion problem involving both centripetal and tangential acceleration. Remember, any object moving in circular motion will have a centripetal acceleration, that is, an acceleration component toward the center of the circle. Now, if the object in circular motion is also speeding up or slowing down, it will also have a tangential acceleration component, that is, a component of the acceleration that's tangent to the circular path. Alright, so here's our problem. Imagine we have an object that starts from rest at time t equals zero. It travels in a circular path of radius capital R, and it does so with a constant tangential acceleration a sub t. Let's further imagine, just for visualization, that it's going in the circle this way, and that at time t, the object happens to be right here. Our job in this problem is to find the acceleration vector at time t. To specify the acceleration vector, we could find the magnitude of the acceleration at time t, and then we could specify some direction. In this case, we're asked to find the angle between the acceleration vector and the velocity vector at time t. All right, let's get started. Let's begin by drawing in our acceleration components, assuming that the object is here at time t. So there's going to be a centripetal acceleration, an acceleration component toward the center of the circle. The amount of the centripetal acceleration is equal to the square of the speed divided by the radius of the circle. We'll also have a tangential component of the acceleration, tangent to the circle. If the object were slowing down, the tangential acceleration would be opposite the direction of the velocity, but this object is clearly speeding up, so the tangential acceleration component will be in the same direction as the velocity, so I'll draw that in. And with these components, I can draw in my acceleration vector. So here's the overall acceleration vector, little a vector, with magnitude little a. We also want to know gamma, the angle between the acceleration vector and the velocity vector. That's this angle right here. All right. Note that our information in this problem was given in terms of symbols. So our answer will be in terms of symbols. Our goal is to get the magnitude, a, and direction, gamma, of the acceleration vector at time t in terms of the symbols given. So in terms of capital R, in terms of a sub t, and in terms of the time t at which we want all this. Looking at our vector analysis, we see a right triangle right here. The magnitude of the acceleration is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. a sub t and a sub c are the legs of the right triangle. So we can get the magnitude a from the Pythagorean theorem. Let's put that right here. We can also plug in for a sub c, which is v squared over r. So let's do that right here. Our goal here is to get the magnitude of the acceleration in terms of our given information, some combination of r a sub t and t. Well, a sub t, that conforms. r, that conforms. But this v here, that's the speed at time t. We need to get the speed v at time t in terms of some combination of r, a sub t, and t. So let's see if we can do that. In order to do that, let's set this aside for a moment and consider the velocity as a function of time in the case of a constant acceleration component. Generally speaking, this expression is true for the x component of multidimensional motion, provided that the x component of the acceleration is constant. Now, when applied to the special case of straight line motion along an x-axis, this expression entails that v sub x, v sub x zero, and a sub x are all tangential quantities. That is, they're all either in the positive x direction or the negative x direction. But the x-axis is the direction, is the path of motion. So v sub x, v sub x zero, and a sub x are all tangential quantities in the special case of straight line motion. So that suggests that we could change the x subscript to a tangential subscript. Let's do that. Then let's imagine taking this straight line path and wrapping it into a circle. In fact, let's do that. Here's our straight line path, and then let's wrap this into a circle and put it right here. And let's map out a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points on the straight line and the points on this circle. 
Let's take this point and map that to right there. Then this point would be right here. This point would be right there. This point would be right here. And this point would be wrapped all the way back around. So if we do that, we can imagine then applying this expression to circular motion. This expression says that the tangential component of the velocity at time t is equal to the tangential component of the velocity at time 0 plus the constant tangential acceleration component times the time. This part here, the constant tangential acceleration component times the time, gives you the amount by which the tangential velocity is changed in the amount of time t. This is a completely legitimate expression to use for the tangential components of our circular motion, provided that the tangential component of the acceleration is constant. So let me write that right here. Before moving on, I should note that this isn't limited to straight line motion or circular motion. I could have taken this path and bent it into any old funny shape. Maybe this little S curve right here. Now, assuming I've drawn this to be the same length as this, I could break it up into segments. And assuming I've done a decent job of this, so that this point corresponds to this one, and then these, and these, and these, and these correspond as well, then I could have a one-to-one -one correspondence between this original straight path and this curvy path. And so I'd have a one-to-one -one mathematical correspondence between all the quantities. So if I have constant tangential acceleration along any shape of path, I can write the tangential component of the velocity as a function of time in this form. You have to be very careful and make sure that you're truly referring to tangential quantities. So at any point, you're talking about an acceleration and velocities that are tangent to the path at every point. But as long as you're careful with that, then you can use this expression for even a curvy path like that, provided that the tangential component of the acceleration is constant. All right, so let's erase all this and get back to our actual problem that we're working on. All right, looking at this expression for the tangential velocity component as a function of time, we know that the initial tangential component of the velocity is zero. We said the thing starts from rest, so all components of the velocity are zero at time zero. So that's gone. And so we're left with that the tangential component of the velocity at time t is equal to the tangential component of the acceleration times the elapsed time. In general, the speed at time t is the magnitude of the velocity at time t, which for us, since we have a tangential component of the velocity only, will amount to taking the absolute value of this tangential velocity component. However, based on the way we defined our problem, a sub t and little t are positive, so it turns out that the tangential component of the velocity is numerically, in this case, equal to the speed. So I can substitute the tangential component of the velocity in for the speed. Substitute this in here, and we'll get this. Being careful to note that when you plug this in, it's first squared here, and then all of this is squared. So that gives you this here. I could then factor out within the square root an a sub t squared. And then I can pull this out of the square root. It'll just become an a sub t. And that's the magnitude of the acceleration at time t in terms of our given information. Moving on to find the direction of the acceleration at time t, as indicated by this angle gamma, we note that the tangent of gamma will be opposite over adjacent. Let's write that here. The opposite side will be a sub c. The adjacent side will be a sub t, so we can put those in here. And we note that a sub c is v squared over r, so we can put that here. Noting again that in this problem, the speed at time t turned out to be numerically equal to the tangential component of the velocity at time t. We can plug in our result for the tangential velocity at time t in for the speed at time t and get this. If we divide top and bottom by a sub t, we lose one of those and we lose that factor there. And then if I take the arctangent of both sides, I can solve for gamma. And we now have our angle gamma as a function of our given parameters and time. Before signing off, I'd like to do a couple of reality checks on the magnitude and direction of the acceleration that we've calculated at time t. 
The first reality check is a units check. So let's look at the acceleration first, or rather the magnitude of the acceleration. This should have acceleration units, and this looks promising, provided that all of this is dimensionless. Well, the one, that's dimensionless, so that's good. So this needs to be dimensionless. By dimensionless, I mean this. If you plug in SI units for an acceleration and for a time and for a length, remember a radius is a length, those SI units should all cancel out. So I'm going to leave that to you to check. If you plug in SI units for this and this and this, all the units should cancel and this should be dimensionless. We can also dimension check this. If you take the arctangent, or for that matter, any inverse trigonometric function of a quantity, that quantity had better be dimensionless. So if you plug in SI units for acceleration, time, and length, radius is a length, this should all come out dimensionless. All right, the second check is to check our expressions, to check our results at t equals 0. Yes, we found results as a function of time, but those should be backward compatible with our initial instant at time 0. So at time 0, the object was at rest. When the object is at rest, the speed is 0, and hence the centripetal acceleration is 0. So at time 0, there should be no centripetal acceleration component, and the acceleration should be entirely tangential. Let's check this expression to see if it is consistent with that. If you plug in 0 for the time, you end up with 0 here, and you get that the magnitude of the acceleration is equal to the tangential acceleration. And that can only happen if your acceleration is entirely tangential. We can also do the same check for the angle. Plug in 0 for t right here, you get 0. Arctangent of 0 is 0. So that means you should have a 0 degree angle between the acceleration and the velocity, which would mean that the acceleration was entirely tangential. All right, so our expressions satisfy the units check, and they also satisfy a check at time 0. All right, that's all for now. I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.